ask Billy the same question. You know, obviously the, the, the season's going really well for you guys. It is a successful season, and then you guys are looking to push towards the playoffs. But uh, when you look back on it and you see, you know, you beat Florida in state rival, I know it might mean a little bit more for you guys. Is, is that a little extra cherry on top? You get to look back and say, hey, you know, we we were the best team in the Sunshine State on top of it. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if I've ever really thought about it like that, but the fact that we've never beat them twice in a season is uh, would be pretty nice. Um, but you know, I just think we just enjoy that playing that level of competition this time of year. So I don't think we get too caught up in, in the state of Florida. I think we're more proud of the state of Florida and how good softball is with UCF and USF and us. And you know, we all feel responsible to grow the game so much. So yeah, so but you know, going to be really excited about the opportunity to to get after a, a second win against them for sure. Was it Elizabeth Hightower on your recruiting radar when you were when she was coming out of high school? Yep, yep, she's pretty good. And Lexi Delbray just up the road too. So yeah, that's the other part of being in the state of Florida is, you know, <laughs> everyone's going after the same kids. And, um, you know, I think you just want to find the spot that fits for you for four years. And, you know, that was them, uh, UF was that for them. So, you know, I think that that's a good thing. I'm always happy for people finding the right spot. So, but yeah, she definitely was. Only a couple miles down the road here. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you played so many ranked teams, so many elite games. Uh, mm -hmm. How does that help you? And Chloe even mentioned that you guys have the saying, like, never count the holes out. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of an identity you guys have taken on? And how much does that help now at this point in the season? Yeah. You know, I don't think it's an identity that we bring up. It's something that we see in the journey of our season. So, you know, we've had a lot of come from behind. We've had a lot of um, just staying in it, at bats, um, defensive. You know, we've been in some binds and got ourselves out of some things. I mean, from the epic plays, you know, that Josie and Mud just last weekend to just the routine stuff that they make it look so easy. So um, I think, you know, when you get into 30 or 40 games, you start to see what you're about. So, um, you know, it's kind of those things like you get into the fifth, sixth inning and you're like, don't count us out. Like, you know, I mean, we've done it before. We can do it again. Stay in it. Stay in it. So, um, so something that's morphed just from the season teaching us what we're all about. You probably thought this would be a really good defensive team going in, but has it maybe exceeded expectations mm -hmm. in some regards? Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, I, I mean, just really proud, like Michaela Edfield. You know, I mean, Anna Shellnut was an anchor for us. And, um, you know, I think everyone said, oh, gosh, Anna's gone. And now someone new coming in, taking the responsibility of not only knowing your pitching staff, but how to receive. I mean, receiving pitches is a high-level catching position like you know you're talking rise balls and change ups and drop balls and our pitchers aren't easy to catch and so you know Michaela stays in it so that's only mentally exhausting but then the at bats and then the extra pressure of the whole area 51 and sneeze and so many things that are out of her control but she really appreciates and and really wants to re represent so well so um so I would say Michaela's one of them you know a rookie behind the plate you know someone that touches the ball every single pitch like it's going to be a tough year and she's exceeded expectation on the maturity side and the mental side so really proud you know of that part Mac, you know, new season coming in. Um, I think Watson has, has stepped up her game big time. You knew what to get from Cat, but you know, Emma's coming in now. You've got, you know, freshman with Brooke getting time. Um, I think Dev stepped up. So we have some young people, Kaylee Harding, sophomore, like some young people doing some really cool things. So I think as a coaching staff in the beginning, hey, we're going to take our lumps. It's going to be a tough season. Um, and we've taken lumps, but you know, the W's have seemed to, to pile up for us and it's been pretty awesome. And now they have confidence in what their abilities are. I imagine it's pretty easy to get up for Florida, but uh, yeah. being this late in the season and you know, school's kind of over, it's just mm -hmm. softball, mm -hmm. um, not being them twice in a season, yeah. what would that mean to you and how are you looking forward to it? I mean, obviously yeah. that goes without saying. But. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it would really um, solidify a top and that, you know, the top eight seed, you know, I think you want that national seed and um, both teams right now, I mean, this is huge for Florida. I think they're, you know, kind of bubble talk of a, of a national seed. So. This is just a big game that everyone gets together for because we want that opportunity to be hosting. And so um, so there's that, there's rivalry, um, there's pride. Uh, there's so many things that go into this. And you know, on the side of being out of school, we're professional athletes right now. This is as close as it gets to us. And um, I also think we get really quality time you know, with the players right now. So we get to do some zip lining and have some breakfast together and do some things that when you have school going on, it's hard to get everyone together at the same time. So there's a lot of things that we really look forward to this time of year. And it's nice that that preps up to a Florida and then you know, going for a postseason. With all that being said, oh, <laughs> you can go ahead. Uh, just with all that being said too, Coach, I mean, 
because you talked about you know weeks ago that just you're getting ready for your girls to become that professional ball player. Yes. The stress level, can you did you see that almost immediately? Maybe that is less of a burden with school and work, everything lifted off their shoulder to be able to come here, maybe a little more focused and practice on, on top of the fun stuff you guys do. Yeah, you know, I find it to be when you have more on your plate, you seem to be more scheduled. When you have less on your plate, it's a little easier to sleep in and stay up late and do all those things. So sometimes I feel a challenge for us is to figure out how to manage the day with things they have to do, still get their pool time in, still get their relaxed time in, but make sure that you're, you know, not sleeping in and Netflixing, you know, the whole day long. So, um, so it's, a, it's an honest conversation we have, like everyone looks forward to the summertime and to relax, but we need to keep, you know, the pedal to the metal and keep getting after it. So, um, so yes, they understand, you know, we always talk about how the heat of the day here is, is not good for us, even though it's fun. Um, but yeah, I think that the excitement of, you can see them out here right now. I mean, you know, someone out here for an hour and a half already, they just love softball. And that's the one thing is you really get to get after your passion right now. And there's just nothing else that you need to worry about. So that part of it is quite fun. How did you see Chloe handle last season, going mm -hmm. through physical therapy, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, it was a tough run for her. Um, you know, she had a... I think a decision at a point in time where, man, do I want to pick up groceries and hold my kids later in life? Like that is, it's a serious thing and I take it very seriously. And, you know, we had a really hard talk, like this could have been your last softball, you know, practice, last softball run. Like, um, I don't know what's in store for you in the future and mapped out, you know, like how many swings a day we can get. Like it's been a long process for her. And, um, you know, you could see by the elation of the team, uh, her of course too, but just, I know Danielle Watson, her roommate, she was in the pen and she's screaming all the way through the dugout to give her a big hug because she's been, you know, so emotional wanting to be there for the team, but not really being able to do so much, you know, been limited in the weight room and those things. So, um, so yeah, I, anyone that has joy in a player that had injury and they get back into their opportunity and be able to be successful, it just brings goosebumps to you. And um, kudos to our trainers and Eunice Fernandez and everyone that brings them back to be able to do that. I mean, it's just an incredible amount of time that they put in for that opportunity. What was she like as a high school recruiter? I think she said she committed at the over eighth grade year. Yeah. Maybe an easy recruitment considering yeah. she loved Florida State so mm -hmm. much, but what was, what was that process like? Um, you know, that was the early recruiting time for us. So it was a kind of normal process. Uh, we had a lot of early commits. I mean, Brooks and early commits. So freshmen here now that we're early commits to. So um, that has changed. Um, I don't know if it would have changed her recruiting process, whether it was eighth grade or junior year. Um, I think she loves Tallahassee. She loves Florida State. Her family is incredibly amazing. And, uh, you know, we knew that she could swing it. And it's just a matter of getting her out here and swinging it. So I think people see what we saw. And now it's more consistent with it and healthy with it. So Coach, you did alluded to earlier how you've had a lot of um, come from behind wins and yep. also close wins. What do you think are some of the factors that allow you to keep doing that? Um, I, you know, I, I would say our culture and our chemistry of, you know, just really being in each other's hip pocket. And I also think last year we learned our lessons of um, don't let failure be a frustration piece for you. Um, that's the game. You know, I was telling you, you signed up for softball. You signed up to fail. Why are you getting mad? You know, this is a failure game. And so when you can really mentally get after that, you know, and be like, man, if I could just pass the bat or if I could just be in my teammates hip pocket, you know, until the very last out, we have a chance. And um, that was a lesson we learned. I think we were pretty frustrated middle of the season last year to find out where we could go. Like, don't stop before the magic happens is, is kind of something that we talked about a lot is you don't know what's ahead of us. Just stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. So um, I really believe that's where our fight comes and, and the smart part, you know, being able to make adjustments. And uh, I think the base running part, you know, we make some huge momentum swings because of good base running decisions and we push the defense and um, all those things together make some special sauce for late in a ball game.